Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello friends, my name is DJ. You're watching the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel and I am continuing my coverage of Commander Legends. If you wanna see all of the best cards in white, click on the other video that I've made, but I'm gonna jump around and start talking about green cards. And I'm gonna start off with a very good boy, Anara Wolvid Familiar. Four CMC for a four, four partnered legend. And as long as it's your turn, commanders you control have indestructible. Uh, so what is it for an indestructible four, four? Well, you could pair it with something that's good with board wipes and do sort of the weaker version of the Avacyn thing. Maybe you have another commander that really needs to stick around in order for you to combo, um, but then it has to be a partner commander that facilitates that. I think this is another one of those uncommon ones that is gonna see very little play in our format. Let's pay attention to Annoyed Allosaur, Altasaur, and pay attention to the return of Cascade. We're gonna be having a lot of Cascade, and speaking of a lot of Cascade, let's look at Apex Devastator. Uh, eight green green, 10 mana, 10, 10, and it has Cascade, you know what, let's look at this version. This is the far better version. Cascade, 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 Cascade. Four Cascades, just, really fun text on that card. If you like Cascade, and I think that we all do, we're gonna love this set because it almost doubles the amount of Cascade that we have available to us in our format. And even the Altasaur that I mentioned is better than some of the other Cascade cards that we've seen. I think Wizards have, has really dialed in on what Cascade should mean in our format. Uh, remember, 10 mana is a lot. I know that four Cascades can get you way more than 10 mana value, but this could easily just cascade into your soul ring. Uh, so, I don't know, this is just gonna be an over the top card. I don't think it's gonna be incredibly good. Um, I mean, if you can cheat it into play somehow, but by the way, it's not just cheating it into play, it's cheating it into be cast. So like, Emergent Ultimatum, if they choose the card, has you casting it. You know, Master of Predicaments, Unexpected Results, that would be a fun random one. Uh, Aminatu's Augury, uh, Descendant's Path, if you know, you want that Chimera value, because certainly Hydras aren't good if you cast them for free off the top of your library. Uh, so there's other ones too, but honestly, there's not a lot of ways to abuse the cast trigger. So it really makes this fair and fun and over the top, and I think that's what it was designed to do. Uh, let's go on to our next card, Bio Waste Blob. Uh, two green green for zero zero, ooze you control, get plus one plus one. This is indeed an ooze. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a commander, create a token that's a copy of Bio Waste Blob. I love the ooze support. We've been getting it a lot more recently. In fact, if we look at all of the best oozes, you know, biogenic, you know, bio waste, uh, corrosive. <clears throat> I mean, experiment one's not that old. Same thing with this blob. It's pretty old. Um, but if we go Orin Reef Ooze, Prime Speaker, Ravenous Slime, Slurk, Splitting Slime, uh, Amori the Collector, like we've been getting a lot more ooze support. I know I'm talking to the three commander players out there that love the ooze support that Wizards of the Coast needs to give us. Uh, but it's just kind of a fun card. Uh, four mana for an Anthem is not great. Four mana for a plus two plus two Anthem is very good, you know? So if you can get this going, it can do a lot. And if you combine it with other oozes, it could be great. Speaking of great, let's talk about one of my favorite cards and favorite mechanics, Core of Bounty. It's two green green for an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. The Monarch mechanic is spectacular. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Ramp, great. If you're the Monarch instead, you may put a creature or a land card from your hand on the battlefield. That's now cheating mana cost. That's super ramp where you just like drop your big creature. Uh, notice it's put it onto the battlefield so you can't be cascading off of it, but you're in green. You're gonna be able to put tons of big bigs onto the battlefield. Now, <clears throat> Is this good enough? Well, I think that it's good for Commander because Commander wants us to be able to ramp into the really mid to late game. 
Uh, this is not going to measure up in other formats or in more competitive formats because ramping on turn five is blah. We want to be doing meaningful things on turn five because you only get this ramp trigger on your upkeep. Um, so I'm not a really big fan of the do nothing enchantment. does draw you a card, okay? But it doesn't give you anything to get this monarch back. Introducing it is fun. Ramping is good, but... Don't you want to be ramping earlier? Like, this is not Explore. Um, the mana cost does make a big difference. Uh, so, I still think this is a powerful card. I just think it's not going to perform as well as some of the earlier enchantments that give us mana ramp. Although, Monarch can do a lot. So, maybe it's better than I'm saying. Alright, uh, Dawn Glade Regent. First off, this has to be some winner of art because I know that there's a face right there and ears right there, but what I'm seeing is a handlebar mustache and then eyes with like beautiful eyelashes and then like some hair going on. So I'm seeing this like old timey handlebar mustache uh, elk coming into play here rather than this like cute little face and uh, you know, Triceratops horn structure. So anyways, my old timey Dawn Glade Regent. It's a seven mana, eight, eight. Get the Monarch, thumbs up on that. When you have the Monarch, permanents you control have Hexproof. It's really great to have Hexproof when you have the Monarch because then you can kind of make sure that your board stays the way that it is so that you can properly defend the Monarch. You know, Archetype of Endurance is not a bulk card for, you know, being an uncommon. It's a dollar. You know, and actually the foil prices were so expensive, like the foil prices were more than $5 that they reprinted it as a foil in the Mystery Booster Retail Edition foils. Uh, so this is a solid card, eight mana to give everything you have hexproof. There's only seven, you know, so Dawn Glade Regent doing, doing some work. I think that some people are definitely going to pay attention to it because I've seen Archetype of Endurance do some work. All right, let's call out some other Monarch cards. Entourage of Trust, fantastic card for a common. Uh, play it in your budget decks. Play it in your non-budget decks. It's just a great card. Farhaven Elf, ramp on a dude is great. Finhorn Elves, ramp on a little dude is uh, less great, but sometimes you need dudes and you need mana and you need elves. Sometimes you need druids, so there you go. Uh, Finn Clade Fugitives, uh, they're Salamander Elf Rogues, so... Um, if you're into that sort of thing. Encore can be pretty powerful, but, uh, and this Encore, by the way, is only five. So that's kind of fun, just to pay five and then have 21 damage just kind of like out from anywhere. It's kind of fun. Uh, Fertilid is interesting. One of the interesting things is that you can force target player to search their library. So that's interesting, I like that. Uh, the Caller of wild Wirewood, Gil Onra. <clears throat> okay, there's a legendary creature, partner, it's a one, two, and you can add a green mana to your mana pool, and when you spend it to cast a spell with over, you know, six or greater, you get to draw a card. Jalanra, which is what I've decided to call her, uh, actually is a feeling of Kiora, where, you know, big things enter the battlefield, and you get to draw cards, and you can ramp a little bit. Uh, Kiora's not great, and Yorana will be just fine. Uh, and if you have a deck full of big stuff, you might draw a couple cards, but for the most part, you know, it's going to be underwhelming. Helana Kessig Ranger is three and a green for a three, four partnered legendary creature with reach. And whenever another creature enters a battlefield in your control, you may pay two. When you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Uh, creature combat is not something that we're really fixated on in our format. It's not like, oh, I need more removal for creatures. But having easy access to it could be really, really good. Uh, let's say that you have a bunch of death touch stuff in your deck. You just have like an acidic slime and you're like, all right, I'll pay two more and I'll fight something and immediately kill it. Uh, Shervel or I don't know what other things we have in here, but there's a lot of creatures with death touch, a lot of big creatures, you know, Gaunty right there. Just like, all right, you know, I've got a Gaunty. I'll take your card and immediately kill whatever you have. Not to mention, you know, Grave Titan has death touch, but just f dealing six damage to something oftentimes will kill it. Um, the reason why I mentioned death touch is because sometimes you have enough mana to pay six for Gaunty and fight, but you might not have enough to pay, you know, six and plus two extra for Grave Titan and fight, you know. 
But have, adding a Doom Blade onto every single creature you have is pretty fun. All right, let's move on to Iktekic Salvage Splicer. Five CMC, that's four and a green for a legendary creature with partner. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Iktekic and a plus one plus one counter on each golem you control. Golem Tribal or Artifact Tribal in green, which is fun because green can do some artifact stuff too. Uh, if you look at all of the golem makers, uh, white's probably the best, you know, Blade Slicer, you know, Cavalier of Dawn, you can aim at your own stuff. Um, Master Splicer is really good. Splicer skill uh, is kind of fun. Uh, but I think the best ones are probably like Precursor Golem, the new Phyrexian Triniform, which has Encore 12 from this set. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It dies, you create three Golems, it's a Golem itself. Like, that's just fun, just over the top stuff. Uh, so, what would you do to create an artif a green based artifact partner Golem deck? Well, I think you gotta go green white. And green-white artifacts could be fun. Like, no one else might be building that, which is kind of exciting, actually. I, I think that if you're looking for a cool way to differentiate yourself, like, it's a good way to go. All right. Um, and by the way, maybe you go with the the white uncommon one that, like, gives your artifacts protection from stuff because you are going to be attacking with your golems. Uh, so that might be a good combination as well. Great elf support, but let's go on to Kamal, Heart of Krosa. Just look at this beefy, beefy man. Kamal, Heart of Krosa is uh, six green green for a legendary creature, Human Druid. It also has partner. So this is something you can pair up with another card. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control gain plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn. It overruns for free at the beginning of combat. Overrun is a five mana effect. And so you're only paying a little bit extra to get Kamal in addition to this effect every single turn. One under green until end of turn, target land you control becomes a one one elemental creature token with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. It's still a land. So for two mana, you can start animating your man lands. And if Kamal stays around, they become four four trample, indestructible, vigilant. It's good. It's really, really cool. I uh, love that etched art, by the way. Um, let's compare it to the other Kamal. Well, ultimately, they don't actually compare that well, because the old Kamal uh, was able to animate lands too, but it did it so cheaply, and you can animate your opponent's lands, that it became board wipe protection. So if your opponents were going to wipe the board, you'd animate a bunch of their lands, and then they'd all die. Okay. Also, this was sort of an ultimate uh, mana, infinite mana outlet. So if you had a bajillion million mana, you could just overrun, 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 so that your, you know, two lands or, you know, one single creature could just get big enough to take someone out. Um, this Kamal is much fairer, um, but maybe better on its own. I don't know. Kamal Fist of Kroos is just, just good. Like... It's got a few different levels on it, but being able to have this in your command zone with another partner, um, I think that people are gonna play Kamal. It's gonna be good. And uh, it's gonna be clunky because coming down at eight mana means that the next one comes down at 10. Ugh, like that, that's gonna hurt a lot. All right, Kamal's will. Kamal's will is to animate lands. <laughs> Three to green for an instant. Until end of turn, any number of target lands you control become 1-1 one, one elemental creatures with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. They're still lands. Um, we've had effects that animate all your lands. Uh, we've had uh, things that turn them into 2-2s. Two so turning them into 1-1s, one, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Um, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> Choose target creature you don't control. Uh, each creature you control deals damage uh, equal to its power to that creature. So this is also kind of a kill spell where everything goes, ah, I'm gonna deal damage to that thing. So we got a kill spell. Maybe we have this cool thing that animates all of our lands. 
in order to make these lands really relevant, we need something like Kamal to pump them up. Maybe we have something like a Sylvan Advocate making them into three threes instead of uh, just one ones. I mean, Sylvan Advocate goes really well with Kamal, all of the Kamals, to be honest. Um, maybe you have sort of this lands matter deck uh, and you have tons of lands and you like turning them into stuff and swinging with them. I can, I can see it. I can see a really powerful deck, not powerful, uh, a really fun deck that gets a lot of mana and can do powerful things, but it has to get into the late game. All right. Kadama of the East Tree. Four green green for a 6-6 six, six legendary spirit with reach and partner. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put on the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana costs from your hand onto the battlefield. Whoa! This is so good. This is very, very good. Um, okay, so it sucks that this is coming in at six mana because at six mana, you can't do very much with it afterwards. But if this effect is on the battlefield, like literally any dumb creature and you're like, oh, I'll put a land down too, or any big creature, you put a smaller creature with it. Um, it's surprisingly strong, but you need to get into the late game. This needs to remain untouched. And you need to have enough card draw to be able to use this card advantage that um, this mana advantage that Kodama of these tree is giving you. So it's powerful, but there's a lot of hoops that you got to jump through to get there. And ultimately, it's pretty vulnerable and expensive to get on the battlefield. People are going to play this, though, and have fun. They're going to play a land and then like put a Mox Tantalite onto the battlefield for free. Or they're going to play like... Uh, they're going to play some huge, they're going to play like Kamal for eight mana. And then they're going to just be like, okay, I'm going to put a seven drop into play like right afterwards to get just tons of value. All right. Let's talk about Magus of the Order. Magus of the Order is a long series of Magus cards where they've done callbacks to really powerful uh, spells, effects, artifacts from, from past. And this one harkens back to natural order. Magus of the Order is two green green for a three three human wizard. Uh, green, tap, sacrifice Magus of the Order and another green creature to search your library for a green creature card, put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Yeah, this gets anything. This gets, I mean, in cube, it gets Crater Hoof Behemoth. It also gets Progenitus. Eh? Maybe you've got a deck and you need you need progenitus out there. Um, so this is way slower. Like natural order, just paying for s sacrificing that creature and then immediately being able to search. Like that's better. It really is. Uh, Magus the order. You it hits the battlefield, and you need to have it tap. So here's where I think Magus the Order would be really good. I'm imagining actually like a Mirren of Clan Neltoth deck or any sort of sacrifice deck, like a Korvald deck. One where you're not trying to uh, cheat into the win immediately, but one where you're just kind of trying to get value. And yes, this will be a lightning rod, but that means that your Korvald or your Marin isn't a lightning rod either. You play Magus and you could get a ton of value manipulating Sacrifice, manipulating the graveyard. Uh, and I think that you can play this really well for fun. Kind of. All right. Um, disenchant with Cascade, thumbs up. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay XX. When you do, distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target elves. So again, this is very elf specific. Uh, it's a partner. I think that uh, if you are playing an elf deck, sometimes you have the ability to get a ton of mana with Gaia's Cradle and stuff like that. Uh, so this might be a good fit for you. Otherwise, it's pretty narrow to spend a lot of time talking about. Reshape the Earth. Six, green, 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 and nine mana sorcery. If you get up to nine mana, then you can have the privilege of getting up to 19 mana. Search your library for up to 10 land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Um, yeah, no, it's not great. Man, Boundless Realms is oftentimes overkill, and that's at seven mana. Getting up to nine mana is crazy. And then what are you, what are you getting? You're getting literally every single utility land that you have. I mean, they talk about fetching not really being able to thin your deck, but taking out 10 mana is definitely going to thin your deck out. 
look, there might be ways to cheat this into play. There's a lot of ways to cheat sorceries, um, but ultimately this is just over the top ramp. And a lot of times getting one extra land or two extra lands is just a little bit better. In fact, let's skip to the very end and talk about three visits, one extra forced on the battlefield. Three visits, slam dunks on the other one, the nine mana one. Uh, I mentioned this, by the way, because it's a reprint of like a $150 card. It's crazy. Uh, so really glad to see three visits. Uh, people really wanted this card because number one, it says forest card. So in uh, other decks, so it's like a, the reverse of Farseek. And by the way, they have this effect already. Uh, some people just wanted multiple copies of it. So it's just another copy of nature's lore. So not something like super impactful, but people wanted it and I wanted for decks too. So there you go. Okay. So three visits in nature's lore, better than reshape the earth, save your money. Root Weaver Druid, two and a green for a two one elf druid. When Root Weaver Druid enters the battlefield, each opponent may search their library for up to three basic land cards. They each put one of those cards on the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest on the battlefield tapped under their control. So they get three, they give you one and they keep two. So if every single opponent does this, you end up up three lands and they end up up two lands. I don't think this is great. I think that sometimes you might want a, a veteran explorer uh, a veteran explorer, by the way, is a single man, and if it dies, you can search your library for everyone gets to search their library for two basic lands and puts them on the battlefield. Um, so, but veteran explorer is not this like crazy card that everyone really likes to play. It's seen as like a group hug card. So I'm, I think that this is going to be a group hug card, and if one player decides they don't want to do it, then you're not doing so great. Heck, you could play this card and everyone just says no, and then you've played a three mana two one. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's bad, you know? So, look, this is not tempt with discovery, uh, where you automatically get one land and you might be able to tempt your way up to four, where you really see a big mana advantage over your opponents. This, if everything goes right, you have one extra land and you've ramped everyone else. It's just not, no, I'm not interested in it. I am interested in Slurk, the all ingesting. Uh, five and a green for zero, zero. It's a partnered legendary ooze. Uh, basically it enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. Okay. Pretty standard for hydras or oozes or whatever. Whenever Slurk or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control that has a plus one plus one counter on it. So it gives this sort of like lasting effect where something dies and then everything can get a plus one plus one counter. I can see how this effect could get rolling a little bit and have one thing die and then distribute a bunch more plus one plus one counters and something else die and you know, you distribute more. So you end up with more power when you sacrifice stuff than ends up on the battlefield. It's an interesting thing. It's also nice that it's news. Let's talk about one of my favorite cards, Sweet Gum Recluse. Four green green for a zero three spider. It's got flash, cascade, and reach. Whenever Sweet Gum Recluse enters the battlefield, put three plus one plus one counters on each of any number of target creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. So remember, the way Cascade works is that Sweet Gum Recluse goes on the stack and then you Cascade, and then that Cascade spell actually ends up resolving first, entering the battlefield first, and then Sweet Gum Recluse resolves and enters the battlefield, and then that trigger will happen. So anything that this Cascades into will get those plus one plus one counters. So, I mean, like a Hermit Druid? Or Deep Forest Hermit? Like, like that's a pretty good hit, right? <laughs> That could be one of the better hits out there. Deep Force Hermit puts five bodies onto the battlefield. That's 15 extra count power. You're getting four, you know, four fours. And you're, this is turning in to a three, six reach. That's pretty good. I mean, there's lots of other ways that we can sort of combo this into other stuff. Like let's say, for example, 
you play an Avenger of Zendikar, and then you play the Sweet Gum Reclos. Like, if you happen to have that ridiculous amount of mana, then things are going okay for you. I mean, let's just imagine this in a Cascade deck, too. Like, you play, you know, Maelstrom Wanderer, that big Cascade dude, and then suddenly Sweet Gum Recluse could be, you know, cascading, you know, into a Bloodbraid Elf that's cascading into a Shardless Agent that's cascading into some Mana Dork, and then there's counters everywhere. I like it. I like that it also has flash and can ambush stuff. Um, it could definitely go in like a blue-green flash deck for sure. Uh, I think it's fun. I don't think it's great. Obviously it can go in spider decks, you know, but I don't think it's like the most amazing thing. I really like the extended art on this because it feels like, you know, the pods and stuff go off a little bit more on the edge. Anyway, uh, I think it's fun. I think you're gonna play it, but I don't think it's gonna be amazing. Like I think the price tag is probably, no, the price tag is right, 80 cents. Heck yeah, play with the spider, it's fun. All right, everyone, this is my uh, set review for green. There's gonna be more on the way. Let me tell you about what I think is the card I'm most excited about, the card that it is the best in green, uh, the art that's the best, and, uh, and, the, and the art that's just the most adorable out there. So green is actually a little bit underwhelming. Isn't that amazing? We are used to everything in green being just so amazing, so spectacular. So I actually think the best card in green is Magus of the Order. I can see it working in a lot of different decks and it doesn't measure up to natural order, but sometimes it doesn't have to. It's just a, a really solid card in certain strategies. Um, I kind of like that green is big and dirtily, like eight mana, six mana, 10 mana. <laughs> You know, like, I think that that's kind of where green belongs. And a lot of the other stuff just feels a little bit clunky. I think the card that um, maybe is second place for most powerful, but uh, something that I'm looking forward to is uh, old timey handlebar mustache Dawn Glade Regent, uh, just because I know that I want the Monarch and I know that I like protection uh, for my creatures. So this again, big clunky seven drop uh, could make it into my deck. Uh, the best art I think is the new Hunter's Insight. Look at this, look at this thing. It's so good, very cool and better than, well, I don't know. I've, I never really liked the, the wolf eyes. Like people love Tyrese Nielsen art, but I didn't like the wolf and then the wolf eyes. And it just felt like three wolves howling at the moon. I'm a big fan of uh, this version right here. And the art I want to be in has got to be these fin-clad fugitives. Don't you want salamander bottom half? Like, as, like you know, you could be a centaur. Or you could have a salamander legs. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so weird. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this part of the set review. If you're interested in other ones, just click subscribe so you can follow them. I want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. If you want to buy some of these cards, uh, you can use the coupon code JUMBO5 to save 5% off your order. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, patrons. They support me all the time. And stay tuned for more cards from Commander Legends.